Hey, what's going on guys? It's your boy Grizz here and season six of Warzone 2 has just dropped and I figured now is going to be the best time to give you guys my settings video. Now, one of the questions I get asked all the time in streamer to go over my controller settings and instead of constantly going over those every time they ask, I would just like to have a video to reference them by. So I'm going to go ahead and go over the controller settings. Now, starting off with the first setting controller, we have the edit button layout. I've always used tactical way back in the day before I had a mono controller, which is what, you, as you can see, I'm using now. But I have this set to tactical. I've always used this. All it does is it swaps out circle and R3. So normally circle is going to be how you crouch, lay down, slide, that type of stuff. And then R3 is going to be how you melee. I have those swapped around. So now circle is how I melee and R3 is how I lay down, slide, crouch, dive, whatever. And I actually have R3 bound to my back right paddle right here. And basically what that does is it allows me to use the paddle instead of using the joystick, which if you use the joystick a lot, you're constantly pressing down on it. It's going to make it to where you have to keep up in your dead zone and it's just going to wear the analog sticks out way, way worse. And now to flip L1, L2, R1, and R2, I have that set to off. I shoot with my triggers. These are actually digital triggers, so it's really, really fast. Warzone DMZ button layout preset. I have that set to tactical. I don't change that for anything. It's always tactical every game out of play. Same thing with the Warzone and DMZ flip. I have that set to off. Custom button layout I have set to off as well. I don't really want to change that. I love the way tactical is. It's what I've always played on. It's what I know. That's what I'm comfortable with. All right, going into the bumper ping, I have that turned off. We don't want to use that. Stick layout preset I have set to default. You guys can change this if you want to. All of this right here is mainly personal preference. Feel free to change it and test it if you want to. Completely up to you. And now this is a big one. Controller vibration. A lot of people don't really understand why a lot of people have it off. Even if I wanted to turn mine on, I have the rumble packs taken out of this PS5 controller. So even if I turn it on, I'm not going to get any vibration regardless. But one thing that a lot of people don't understand is when you're aiming and you're making those micro adjustments, if the controller is shaking, it could throw your aim off a little bit, which could cause you to miss your shot, cause you to lose your aim assist if you're, you know, you're shaking too hard, whatever it is. And then you lose the fight. Nobody wants to lose their fight. Keep it off. If you haven't ever tested it being off, please try it. And let me know how you like it. I promise you, you will hit a lot more of those shots. Trigger effect. I have that on full haptics. And basically what that does is it activates all the haptic effects, which is like your dead zone, resistance, vibration, if you have it enabled. Not really a whole lot to that one. Now we're gonna go with my aiming sensitivity. I use 12-12 with ADS sensitivity multiplier of 0.50. This is just kind of what I've messed around with. I'm still messing around with it, up and decreasing the ADS sensitivity multiplier just to see what I like. Sensitivity multiplier, I have that set to default. All of these are set to one by default. If you guys want to test this, all this is personal preference. It would help you more comfortable in game, see what helps you hit your shots more, and that's what you need to use your sensitivity. Don't really go off of other people's sensitivity. It's a good place to start, but that's not where you want to be. Everybody's different. Some people prefer slower sensitivity. Some people prefer high sensitivity. It's completely personal preference. Vertical aim axis, I have all of this set to standard. Gameplay, aim down sight behavior, I have is hold. If you have it on toggle, every time you hit the aim button, it's gonna aim in. And then you have to hit the aim button again to unaim. I would rather have it hold. It's just a lot more responsive, a lot easier to use. I don't know how the hell people use toggle. Change, zoom, shared input, I have set to sprint, tactical, sprint, focus. Automatic sprint, I have that on automatic tactical sprint. I've just learned to use this. If you don't wanna use it, set it to off. I wouldn't do it on automatic sprint. I would say either go automatic tax sprint or set it to off completely up to you. Another personal preference. I just prefer automatic tax sprint. Equipment behavior I have set to hold. Weapon mount activation I have this set to ADES plus melee. This is personal preference again. I do think this is the best option though. That way you're not accidentally mounting. Just a personal preference thing. Interact slash reload behavior. This is a massive setting a lot of people don't know about. You probably don't know about it or your friend probably doesn't know about it. I'm gonna go over everything you need to know with this setting right now and I promise you this is gonna help you a lot. I have mine set to prioritize interact and basically what that means is as you guys saw earlier, I'm using a modded PS5 controller. I have my square button mapped to the back top left trigger right here. This little, this little pad right here, this little paddle. Just so I don't have to take my finger off the right analog stick and go up and tap square. It just makes it a lot easier. But basically what prioritize interact means is let's say if you shot your gun and you need to reload, but you also need to pick up something in front of you. Like for example, there's a stack of plates you need to pick up, but you also have to reload. If you don't have this on prioritize interact, when you hit square, you're going to reload your gun instead of pick up what you need. So when I have it on prioritize interact, whenever there's two options available, like getting in a vehicle or picking up something, if I tap square, it's gonna pick it up or let me in the vehicle. If I hold square, it'll reload my weapon. There's been a lot of situations and I'm sure you guys have been in the, in the same scenario here where you just get through a gunfight, you don't have plates, you hear someone coming, you have enough ammo in your gun to finish the fight if you need to, but you don't have plates. You need plates, there's plates in front of you on the dead body that you just shot. So instead of reloading your gun, 
and possibly getting killed because you're reloading the gun and you don't have plates on. You have to reload the gun and then once that's done, then you can pick up the plates. You don't want that. You want to pick up the plates, run away, plate up, and then continue the gunfight. This is what Prioritize Interact allows you to do. I promise you, if you guys have not tried this yet, please go try it. It'll change your gameplay tenfold. It's probably the most important setting out of every one of these, and I cannot recommend it enough. Armor plate behavior, apply all. And basically what this does is if you're in Warzone or DMZ and you're trying to put plates on, for me, it's triangle. If you have your custom button set up, then I have going to be something different for you. I don't know to tell you, but mine is triangle. So instead of me having to put on three plates and me having to hold down triangle for each plate that I want to put on, I just hold triangle down once and it puts the plates on. If I want to cancel it, I could switch guns or something just to cancel the animation. Strongly recommend apply all. Okay. Now we're going to go into the advanced settings tab. And now this is going to be a lot of important stuff as well. So targeting aim assist, obviously we want that on. Why would you play controller without aim assist? It's the most broken thing in the game. Aim assist type. I have it set to default. It's the start of warzone everybody was using black ops it was super overpowered they did nerf it but it works a little differently now so basically to give it a the best explanation that i know how default is basically like this this is the person that you're trying to shoot right this is the person you're trying to shoot whenever you aim in it slows down when you get close to the target right so here's your character default aim assist is going to start slowing down right here and then the more you get to the center like on the player it's going to slow down even harder Black Ops aim assist doesn't start slowing down here. It starts slowing down around here, but it's way, way stickier when you get to the player. So if you have a big problem hitting your shots, Black Ops might be a really good option for you just because it's going to keep you locked on to that player that you're aiming on a lot harder. I just prefer default. It's just what feels the best to me. I feel like there's a lot of situations where people try to jump through doors and stuff and Black Ops doesn't really help that because the aim assist doesn't really kick in that far away from the player. You have to be pretty close. So I recommend default. If you can't hit your shots, you're having trouble hitting your shots, long range, medium range, whatever. I would recommend Black Ops. Just give it a test, find out which one you prefer and use that. Third person ADS correction type assist. I don't really do third person, so I, I don't know what to tell you with this. Aim response curve type. You want to use dynamic. Out of all of these, I've tested them. Dynamic just feels the best. ADS sensitivity multiplier focus. This is going to be basically when you're using a sniper rifle and you're holding your breath. So when you hold your breath, if you want the aim to be a little bit slower, just so you can make those minor corrections, because if you're holding your breath, you don't really want to be flicking anyway, right? Because it's not going to matter. I have mine set to 0.80, you know, test this out, see what you prefer. I prefer 0.80. ADS sensitivity transition timing. I have this on instant. So basically what this is, is let's say your sensitivity to move around, just turning around and everything like that is super, super high, but you're aiming down sight sensitivity, your ADS sensitivity is lower. If you have this on gradual, if you have a really fast sensitivity, as soon as you ADS, it's going to be kind of weird because it's not going to be slow like normal. Whenever you ADS, it's going to slowly go from fast to normal. So it's kind of like it's an easy let off. If you have this on instant, the second you hit your ADS button, it's going to instantly switch to whatever your ADS sensitivity is. I think that's just way better. It would definitely make you a lot more of a consistent player. I prefer instant. Custom sensitivity presume. Now, a lot of people mess with this. You can mess with this if you want to. I don't really use a lot of the higher zoom scopes. Uh, except for on sniper rifles, but I've already gotten used to my sensitivity as it is. If you want to mess with this, feel free to knock yourself out. I have it on off and I leave everything on default. Input dead zone. Now quit asking people for their damn dead zones, okay? Quit. Dead zones are all dependent on the controller that you have. It doesn't matter if it's a PS5 controller. It doesn't matter if it's a PS4 controller. It doesn't matter if, an, if it's an Xbox controller. It doesn't matter if it's a fucking Wii nunchuck, okay? Depending on how old your controller is, how used it is, how worn it is, whatever the case is, all these different variables, determines your dead zone. You typically want your dead zone to be as low as it can possibly go because dead zone is basically when your analog stick activates and actually starts working. I have mine to 0.18 on the left, 0.19 on the right. You typically want to get as low as you possibly can on the left stick because that's your movement stick. You want that to be as low as you can so you don't have to slam it all the way one way just to start moving because then you're going to get into a lot of bad situations. But now the left trigger and the right trigger, you want these very, very, very low. I messed with this before 0 0.05 is kind of like where I sit. A lot of people sling theirs all the way to zero because they don't want any delay. If you don't have a money controller, you don't have trigger stops or you don't have digital triggers like I do, then you want this to be even lower, possibly zero. That way, as soon as you start moving that left trigger, it activates. Also, if you want a faster reaction time and you don't have a money controller or trigger stops, you can in the settings, I went over this earlier, you can swap to where L1 and R1 are your shooting buttons and L2 and R2 are your tactical and your lethal. 
this way you don't have, even if you have to click it in all the way you don't have to go that far gyro aiming i don't know who in the hell would use this if you want to use this or you want to mess with this have fun i'm not talking about anything with this leave it to off and you're good to go moving behaviors all right now we're coming up on the end of the controller settings here auto move forward i have set to off i don't know why you would want to have this on this makes no sense to me tactical sprint behaviors single tap sprint i don't want to have to double tap my sprint for me to sprint rounded mantle set to off you definitely want this off automatic airborne mantle and automatic ground mantle set both of those to off as well invert slide and dive behavior sliding doesn't really do anything in this game right now when modern warfare 3 comes out everybody's been leaking that there's going to be slide canceling so then we'll be changing the setting but as of right now you want to dive more than you do slide but by having this inverted on standard it's on tap to slide hold to dive so if you want to dive you have to hold down your lay down button whatever that is on inverted all you have to do is tap to dive that's the key plunging underwater movement um, I haven't really messed with this. It just kind of feels good the way it is by default. I wouldn't recommend changing this, but you can if you want to test it and figure out if you might like the other way more. Parachute auto deploy, turn this off, man. I mean, if, if you're AFK a lot, whenever the game starts, maybe leave this on so you don't splat and break your legs. But if you have this on, there's a certain height, no matter where you are in the map, where it automatically pulls your chute. You can go a lot lower than that and pour your chute. That way you can beat people to landing spots a lot quicker. Printing door bash on. If you don't use this, I don't know what to tell you. You're probably moving very slow through the map because there's doors everywhere. Ledge hang mantle behavior. I have this set to movement based. Combat behaviors, ADS stick swap. I have this set to off. Backpack alternate control. I have set to off. Weapon mount movement exit. I have set to on. Weapon mount exit delay. You want that on short. Depleted ammo weapon switch. You definitely want that on. Uh, a lot of people don't realize it, but sometimes this saves your life. If you go to shoot your weapon and it doesn't click, it doesn't shoot, it doesn't, nothing happens. It's gonna, there's gonna, there's everybody has a slight delay to where they want to switch their weapon, and that can get you killed. The game doing that automatically, I think, is a massive bonus. Quick C4 detonation. I don't use C4, so don't touch this. If you have this and you use C4, turn it on. Probably your best bet. Vehicle behaviors. Uh, the camera recenter. I have that to short delay. Uh, camera initial position i have set to free look so i can look around freely uh, overlays and behavior scoreboard map behavior i have set to toggle ping wheel delay i have set to moderate double tap danger ping delay i have set to short wheel menu behavior i have set to hold and now that is all the controller settings now i'm going to jump into the graphic settings and some of the audio settings and all this is just going to be kind of a little bit for fps also for looks it all depends on your pc if you have a bad pc you're going to want to lower these even more if you have a really good pc you might want to keep these or up them a little bit it all depends on your system first thing first is on the graphics setting i like to use full screen borderless uh, a lot of people use for full screen exclusive i just prefer borderless because whenever i want to switch to my spotify tab or whatever i don't have to alt tab i can just move the mouse over and i still get the full screen effect field of view i have set to 120 in brightness this is completely you know up to you i have mine set to 53 you could lower it or heighten it depending on what you want master volume i have set to 38 I also have a go xlr and i have it cranked up about 80 percent on that a lot of different variables with this once again full screen borderless i have it set to my display monitor and my display adapter which is my graphics card dynamic resolution turn this off do not leave it on you don't need this aspect ratio i have set to automatic vsync you want this off vsync in the menus you want off custom frame rate limit i have this set to custom uh i have it maxed out whenever i'm in game in the menu i have it set to 60 and whenever i alt tab or i move over to, to a different window i keep this on 30. all of this right here we don't want to touch leave this on what it is high dynamic range hdr keep this off you do not want this on go to, over to quality we have quality presets i have mine set to custom because i don't use one of the basic ones render resolution i'm on a 1440p monitor so i have it slid up until it says my resolution right here if you're on a 1920 it should say 100 because that's going to be 100 percent of the resolution that you're playing on upscale sharpening i have this set to off you can mess with this if you want to i prefer not to so i don't anti-aliasing smaa t2x is what i use anti-aliasing quality i have set to low video memory scale i have set to 90 texture resolution i have on normal texture filter i have set to low nearby level of detail low distant level of detail low clutter draw distance short particle quality high particle quality level low i just I, a lot of people say if you have it on high you get better frame rate i i've tested this and i have not been able to tell the difference i just have it on low bullet impacts i have on uh, and persistent damage layers I have on. If you don't have bullet impacts on and you're getting shot at and you don't know where from, if you're behind, if you're in front of a wall, just turn around and see if the wall behind you is hit. If it's hit, that means they're somewhere in front of you. This goes a lot of different ways for a lot of different scenarios, and it can help you figure out where the hell you're getting shot from. I share your quality I have on load. I don't think they're needed, uh, but they do tank your FPS. So if you want more FPS, turn this to low. Desolation I have set to off. I don't really see a need for this. If you want it on, 
cool if you don't cool on demand texture streaming i have this set to own streaming quality low volumetric quality i have set to low deferred physics quality i have set to off water quality is default you could move this around if you want to to get a cooler look i just have it set to default i don't really care how the water looks shadow map resolution very low like i said shadows cause fps loss so you definitely want to turn this as low as you possibly can just to get more fps because this game is terribly optimized green space shadows have set to off spot shadow quality has set to medium spot cache is ultra particle lighting low ambient inclusion off green space reflections off static reflection quality high weather grid volumes low nvidia reflex low latency i have it on plus boost depth of field off you do not want this on whenever you ads and you have this on everything around your around your ads is blurry world motion blur turn this off i cannot stand watching somebody watching a video watching a stream and seeing people with this on it does not look cool it, it gives a it gives a sense of motion sickness and if you're moving around a lot or you have a fast sensitivity and people come into the your your field of view slightly you won't be able to tell because your entire screen is blurry weapon motion blur same thing turn this off there's no sense in having these on they don't even look cool it's just stupid to have on they shouldn't even have this option in the game in the first place film grain turn this off now going over to view i use 120 fov we've already went over that ads field of view you want this on affected if you have a higher fov and you use affected whenever you ads it's going to zoom out more so basically what that means is with a higher fov you're going to have less visual recoil and this game is notorious for visual recoil leave this to affected it'll make you feel like your guns have a lot less recoil you'll be able to control recoil better and you'll hit more shots it's a win-win weapon field of view you want wide third person field of view 90 i don't really play third person but i would probably use 90 if i did vehicle field of view you want that wide as well you want to see as much of the screen as you can when you're driving camera you want all of these movements right here on leashed you don't want a lot of movement when you're running and everything like that it can it can really throw off your aim it can throw off your your, your vision you just want this on least which is 50 percent. i wish it could go lower but it's not third person ads transition now if you're in third person and you ads it's going to keep it third person you're just going to have a, a little a crosshair to shoot from if you change this to first person ads if you're in third person and you ads it'll go straight to your aim down sights to whatever reticle you're using your iron sights or whatever default spectator camera game perspective do not use helmet camera hammer helmet cameras just really really weird and awkward it feels like okay shooting over to audio i use home theater this one just sounds the best to me um if you use headphones headphones bass boost or sound bar or pc uh or cinema even i feel like there's just a weird like mushiness to the sound i don't know how to explain it i just prefer home theater i have all of this changed as well the gameplay music volume has set to zero i don't want to hear that dialogue is set to to 70 effects volume all the way up i want to hear all the effects in game voice chat volume for some reason it's scaled insanely in this game turn it down cinematic music volume i want this on zero i don't care to hear this in game at all war tracks volume has set to 22 i don't really care to hear this either but it is kind of cool sometimes i leave it on a little bit voice chat set to on game voice channel set to all lobby last words voice chat turn that on or off depending on you know what you want to if you want them to hear what you have to say after they kill you proximity chat set to on or off if you guys aren't playing in discord or a party chat everybody around you will be able to hear what you're saying to your team and you're gonna be wondering how in the hell did they know what i was doing turn it off if you're not using any type of party chat or discord all of this right here for microphone doesn't matter accessibility i don't really think any of this matters as well uh mono audio kind of does if you use own every bit of your audio is merged together if you use it off the audio is split so if somebody's coming from the left side i won't hear that on my right side i'll hear it on the left side so i know that they're on the left of me reduce uh tinnitus sound i don't know how to say that i have it set to i have it set to own audio advanced settings juggernaut music off i i don't i don't know hit marker sound effects i have it set to classic Feel free to change this to what you want. This is personal preference. This doesn't improve or harm your gameplay in any way. You game when minimized to have that set to off. Another thing, personal preference. Okay, now shooting over to interface, I'm gonna kind of scroll down to the stuff that really matters here. Uh, the vertical heads up display, HUD bounds, I have set to 100. This is set to 100. Any map shape, I have set to square. If you have this on circle, as you can tell, you can mainly look at it right here, okay? You see how it has the little crate and then it has the opening. The opening right here, you see everything past that. Right here, you don't see anything past that. So without really much to do here, you just change it to square. You can see a lot more that's going on in the map than you could with circle. This is nothing more than a game advantage. Any map rotation, set that to on. Horizontal compass, set that to on as well if you want it. Completely up to you. Basically, if you're trying to give a call out, you can call out east or west. 
that way your teammate can kind of go ahead and look in that direction rather than saying, hey, guy over there. That doesn't really help anybody. And we're looking around and we're looking dumb. Crosshairs, definitely turn this on. I don't know why in the hell you would not want to have this on. Hit marker visuals, you definitely want that on. Damage based hit markers, you definitely want that on. That way you can tell when you break somebody, when you hit somebody for flesh. Player names, I have it set to full name. This is personal preference, do what you want with it. In game text chat, I have it set to own. I like to talk shit in game chat, so that's why I have it on. Vehicle HUD prompts, fade after five seconds. Inner dot, I have set to off. A lot of people use this. Feel free to use this if you want to. Inverted flash, I have set to off. If you have it set to on, a flash grenade obviously flashes you, turn your screen white. If you have it set to on, it'll blacken your screen. Kind of nice, depending on who you are. That is going to do it for the settings video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and drop a comment on the video. Subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications by tapping that bell icon. That way you never miss an upload. Thank you all for watching. If you guys have any comments, any questions, let me know down below. I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.